on everybody welcome back to the channel got the shop all cleaned up here well mostly cleaned up so got my welding helmets all hung up here and that cheap face shield thing that comes with the tig water it's underneath that curtain right there but here's the i actually made these hooks for the thing they're actually like a four inch u-clamp that i cut in half and just welded that little bracket on the back of it it works pretty good makes the shop look a lot nicer with all the welding helmets all in the line there so right here is what we're going to be installing today this box that box and that box so let's get them opened up see what they look like and start installing them on the truck all right here's the lift pump we went with it is a air dog 2 4g 165 so let's get this box opened up and see what's in here Instruction manual. Got the wiring harness and everything. The hoses. I'm not sure what's in that box. And then the lift pump itself. That's it. So let's get this box opened up. Oh, okay. This is all the fittings you need. The brackets, the bolts, and everything we need here. All right, in this box is the sump kit that is the mystery item that we couldn't finish the skid plate for. Well, the reason we couldn't finish the skid plate, this is the one that I went with. It does have the out and then the return on that one. It comes with the whole saw fittings. So that's the tube for the return. Well, this is the plate that goes inside the tank itself. And there is the bolts to fasten everything. And some high quality Teflon tape, I'm sure. So, we will need that no more. And in this box here, I got the factory filter delete. That looks really nice. I think it'll look really good on the truck. So, we'll get these set up on the table, give you a closer look. This, it's all laid on the table now. Here's the bracket. Now this is an LML, so it does not have the over the frame one. This actually has a spot on the truck that mounts. Here is the fittings, the hose that comes with it, instruction manual. It does come with this bag of bolts here. All the different bolts to fasten everything. The filler neck return, but we will not be using that since we have the uh, sump for it. And here is the pump, the Air Dog 2 4G. And like I said, here is the sump kit that we're going to be using. It did come with this hole saw where you put it together. Uh, I wouldn't recommend really steel with it, but this is plastic tank. So it be all right for that. And here's the bag of bolts and some clamps it looks pretty decent so i guess we'll find out i am going to put uh they say these sometimes leak people i've served online so they just put silicone around the edge there i'm gonna put some silicone on that and here is the factory delete well the factory filter delete it looks pretty nice that's really heavy aluminum first thing i'm going to do get underneath the truck figure out where i want the sump Gonna drill a hole in the fuel tank, let the diesel drain out, because there is like a quarter tank. We'll come back out, we'll put all the brackets and everything to mount the air dog lift pump on. And we also want to get underneath, wire brush the frame a little bit, give it a co little coat of paint. So it looks a little decent under there. So let's get underneath the truck, figure out where we want this thing, and get a hole drilled. All right, lay underneath the truck here, try to figure out where I want to put this thing. I really would like to put it in a factory location, which is up there. However, I don't feel like dropping the tank, so we're gonna move it up here. This is actually where the sump is gonna go, right here. So I gotta get out, get a catch can, so we can drill a hole in that, and get it drained. And then we're gonna move back here. We're gonna wire brush this, get some paint on it, so it looks a little bit better, because this is actually the bracket where the air dog will mount to. 
So let's get out, get a can, and get under here and get this drilled, get this drained a while. Yeah, that didn't go as bad as I thought it was gonna go. Let's get in the shop now, get the air dog all set up while this drains. Just ready to get out from underneath the truck while this is draining. And I had a little visitor. Now I can't get out from underneath the truck because he's kind of back there, laying between my legs. And uh, yeah, he don't wanna move. All right, I skipped a step here. I actually opened the instruction manual here. I was reading it, I forgot one step here. We actually have to drill those four holes in that bracket underneath the truck first before we mount this to it. So let's get back under the truck, get this held up to where it's supposed to be and get those holes drilled first. This is the bracket that this bracket actually mounts to. It goes right here. So I wanna take a wire brush, brush this off a little bit and shoot some paint on it just to make it look a little bit nicer all right that looks a lot better now let's get this bracket up here get it held up to where it's supposed to be and mark the holes off and get them drilled We got them all drilled now. After I had to go get a new drill, and they line up just if I can see it, they can line up here. Yep, all the holes line up really nice. So let's get this thing painted now. That looks a whole lot better. Now, like I said, I do plan on painting the whole entire frame, but let's get in there, get the, the fuel pump mounted up on the bracket and then get it installed on this bracket here. And yes, I did have to switch containers and we made a little bit of a mess, but we'll get that cleaned up then. And it's still draining. So let's go get this bracket on now. Now let's get this bracket on here and get the fittings on. I already removed the filters. So let's get the inlet and the outlet all on this. You say to put oil on them, so I'm gonna put oil on them. Started by hand. Now we're going to tighten these down. These are the inlets and outlets are 19 or three quarters. The return. And all the inlets and outlets are now done. Now, it's time to install this bracket here. Ready to get this installed now. Now it does come with Allen bolts, but I just put regular bolts in here. Got some regular bolts to put in here, I mean. So let's get this up and in here and get, we can start working on the fuel lines. got the bracket all on here got the fuel fillers back on so nothing gets up in there uh we're still waiting for that to drain so i guess we'll jump onto the wiring system now so let's get the hood pop and get the wire run back to this up under the hood here i do have the fuse pan already pulled off and it's really dirty in there but anyhow 
Got to figure out where to mount this. Probably going to mount this over here on that ground stem. All right, relay's all installed now. Put that in there, looks nice. So I'm gonna run the hot wire to the hot wire on the alternator. And unfortunately, I'm gonna just cut this because I don't like it being this long. We're gonna run this to the alternator. So I'll have to get some new clamps here to put on it. And then the ground, we're gonna probably gonna run either to the stem on the And my daughter's making fun of me. You want to see her? Here. Look. There she is. She's looking, making fun of me. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to get back after this. If I can set my camera back up here and make it look like I was doing something. The relay is all in. Nice and tucked in in there. Now I'm going to run the hot wire to that bolt right there on the alternator. But I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to run the ground. They actually say to run it to the top of the alternator is the best spot. Um, not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. But I am going to cut these wires. Make them a little shorter, make them nicer looking. Now they did actually come in a wire loom. I just pulled it out of the wire loom so I can cut the wire to the length I need. All right, gotta figure out how I wanna run these wires over. So I'm just gonna follow, just gonna go right down around here and leave a little extra. About right there, I think it'll work good. Give these a snip. All right, the hot wire is on. No, I actually ran it, if you guys can see, I actually ran it in the boot, oops, right there. I ran it in the boot with the, the factory wire so I can put the boot right back over it, make it look nice. So, now we've got to find a spot to put the ground. I'm going to get this ground wire hooked, the ground wires hooked up to this. I'm just going to hook them right here to this terminal for right now. Um, and I'll be back with you after I get that done. All right, ground is all done. Sorry if you hear the background noise, it's just the tractor running right there. Father-in-law's getting ready to grind some feed. But, got the ground wire all hooked up here. Now I gotta figure out what for fuse placement this has to go in. So, I'm gonna, like once again, I'm gonna shorten this wire here to make it look good. But I think it looks pretty darn good. There's the hot wire running here. Ground wire runs over here just to the battery. Just fastens on there. Got the, as you saw, I've seen already, the relay right there. Looks all nice. So, I'm gonna keep moving here. Gotta figure, like I said, I'm gonna figure out which uh, fuse this, this actually has gotta get plugged into. And I'll get back with you guys after I'm done with that. All right, we got the fuse tap in now. This one right here. On well, my truck, it is number 45. It's uh, auxiliary HVAC ignition, which is a 10 amp fuse. Um, this is a 2011 LML. But as you know, we have the relay all done there. We have the hot done and we have the ground done. So we are done under the hood now. Uh, we're gonna get underneath, but unfortunately we are still waiting for this to uh, stop draining. And it looks like it's getting there. So. Hopefully here in a little bit, we can get underneath there and get all everything else done underneath. Okay, as you can see now, slow down just a, a tiny little drip. So we're gonna go ahead and just drill it quick. All right, I'm gonna drum the burrs a while. While that is finished draining out there, I'm gonna go ahead and get this sump all ready to go. Thread these in here. There's one. All right. Okay, it's pretty much done dripping here. Like I said, I'm gonna be running silicone here, but I don't really like just relying on silicone. So hopefully the O-ring will help and this will, O-ring and this will help together.
looks pretty good. I think I put the right amount of silicone on that so I don't have to worry about that too much. Um, it is getting dark out here, so I will see you guys in the morning to finish this up. All right, we are back now again. Unfortunately, I tried getting you guys some good angles on hooking these hoses up and everything. I could not get anything good. Uh, all you can see is the back of my head or my back or whatever. So I just went ahead, I did it, got done with all the hoses. They're all hooked up. Uh, I did drop the drive shaft to do the top one. It worked out really nice. So here is what the finished product looks like. I can get you guys up in here. This is your feed line to the engine right here. It hooks up there. Goes on this side, that one right up there. Then this is your return line. This one right here will run down through and go in on this side of the of the, the sump. And then this is your feed line right here. And that also will go down into the sump, which is this side. So doesn't make sense why you have to crisscross them like that, but it is what it is. Um, as far as the top of the tank, crawl back here to show you. All I did, if I can see it here, just put the fitting on right there's a good angle and you can see i just put the hose on and just put a bolt that fit nice and tight into there and just put a hose clamp on it to cap that off so because that's no longer needed anymore i'm going to get out put the factory delete on now and then we're ready to put some diesel in this thing and see if this thing leaks or not hopefully it doesn't and hopefully we don't have to go no further but if we do i'll figure it out past that under the front now as you can see i already removed the front and fender liner so all we got to do, just connect this little line right here, just like that, and then turn this off. Now I'll fit out of the truck, now I'll take pliers and remove this pump sensor or whatever this thing actually is. It's right pretty well soaked in diesel fuel. Just snug it, you don't want to over tighten it because it is just plastic. And then let's go put this right in its place. Oh, this. So, what we got to do is turn this right in and then just plug it right back in. Done. And there is the factory delete. All right, everybody, it's the moment of truth here to see that everything's going uh, Hole or leak? Everything looks dry under here after putting fuel in, so that's a good sign. Let's loosen this filter up here and prime it. Got everything bled, got everything ready to go here as far as the fuel line. So let's turn the key and see what happens here for the first time. Okay, that wasn't good. Try it again. All right, I'll be right back with you guys. I'm gonna bleed this again. While I wasn't firing, I forgot to take the spring and ball out of here. Got T20 Torx. So let's get this out and then we'll try it again. This is what I forgot to remove, but it was all removed. I bled all the lines again. So let's give this a try once more. The air dog is installed with the sump and the factory to filter delete. So unfortunately I would like to take this thing out for a ride, but the ball joint is that bad in the front end. I don't want to take a risk of it falling off and damaging the truck. So we're going to wait for the road test, but the very next video, we will going to be finishing up the skid plate. I don't know what I did with it. Uh, so stick around for that video. Uh, as far as I can see, there's no leaks right now. I'll keep an eye on it. And if you like these videos I'm making, please think about subscribing. Leave a comment down below and I will see you guys in the next one.